Chapter 15. Bizarre's Bazaar. The Noah Emporium arrived in New York on the 30th of October, 1929. It has a magic all of its own, this city, said Mr. Silver, staring through the sepia-tinted window from behind his desk. The buildings, skyscrapers they call them, are growing taller by the day, it seems. It is as if they're racing to touch the sky. There is no place like it. Daniel turned from the impressive view and watched Mr. Silver, who was half hidden behind a pile of black envelopes, scribbling on small black cards. The silver magpie sat on each shoulder. What are those for? asked Daniel, scrubbing a layer of soot from the mirrors and clocks. Invitations, said Silver. He did not elaborate. It's for my birthday ball, Ellie told him later. It's tomorrow. Daniel and Ellie had begun to meet most days before the Emporium opened to the public. Ellie, for all of her fierce bravado, was also caring and loyal, and Daniel had seen flashes of the person she hid behind her armour. It was also useful to be in Ellie's company. He was still banned from writing in the book, and Mr Silver seemed too distracted to teach him much. Ellie was the next best thing, a guide who knew every corner of the Emporium. Daniel supposed that loneliness was binding them together. He was an orphan after all, and Ellie was motherless and always chasing the attention of her father. So here they were, two lonely children sharing in the biggest, most incredible secret there ever was. The smile spread across Ellie's face. When Papa's finished the invitations, you can help me send them out. It will be fun. Fine, said Daniel, unable to fathom why anyone would get so excited about posting some letters. His mind turned to Mr Silver. Ellie, have you noticed anything strange about your dad recently? He's always strange, said Ellie. I mean a different sort of strange, not in a good way. He spends most of his time alone, either locked up in his apartments or out looking for some secret object. I think he might be ill. He's been limping and coughing and all sorts. Ellie considered this for about four seconds. I'm sure he's fine, she said with a shrug. Daniel left it at that, knowing Ellie was too excited about her birthday ball to think about anything else. That evening, twilight came and went but Mr. Silver did not open the Emporium. Is something wrong? asked Daniel. Are we having a night off? Silver looked hollowed and worn. He did not answer, but slipped on his coat. Going out, said Daniel. Silver gave a nod. Come if you like. Eager to explore Manhattan, Daniel was across the room in a few bounds, pulling on his coat and gloves and scarf. Together they set off into the night. As it turned out, sightseeing was not on the agenda. It soon became clear that Mr Silver was on the hunt again for his elusive treasure. He limped a couple of steps ahead of Daniel, barely speaking as they charged along streets carved like canyons through the enormous buildings. Central Park. Among all the suffocating concrete and glass and fog, it seemed like the last green place on earth. Mr Silver pointed out the famous Plaza Hotel, an enormous building that looked like a grand castle. Eight blocks later, they swung into an alley where the steam from restaurant kitchens glowed in the light of the moon. They walked until they reached a plain brown door. At first glance, it seemed to be the back entrance to a store or cafe or hotel. But then Daniel spotted something. Two words carved into the doorframe above the door. The sort of thing that would only be noticed by those searching for it. Bizarre's bizarre. Silver leaned in and opened the door. The shop beyond was a dark and dingy cave, half lit by the soft, flickering glow of hundreds of dribbling candles. The air was soup thick. Mr Silver had packed the Noah Emporium with tr many trinkets and objects picked up on his travels. Props, he called them, that would never be sold, but created the illusion of a regular store. You could spend hours looking and always spot something you'd never seen. But Bizarre's Bazaar must have contained a hundred times the amount of treasures. Coats of armour glistened. Swords and shields hung on great racks. There were jars of pickled animals, powders, lotions, potions, cages containing ravens and snakes, and spiders the size of Daniel's fist. At the far end of the store stood a counter, and behind the counter sat a middle-aged man with greasy receding hair and a long waxy face. His eyes seemed too large for his head, and one of them pointed inwards, while the other fixed on his customers. Are you looking for something in particular? He said in a voice rough as dead tree bark. As a matter of fact, said Mr Silver, 
he leaned in and whispered something in the man's ear. At first, the shopkeeper did not respond. He sat back in his chair and reached under his desk, and when he brought his hand back up, it held a large onion. He raised the onion to his mouth and took a bite, skin and all, as if it were a juicy apple. You're in luck, friend, the shopkeeper said, onion juice dripping from his yellow teeth. Silver took a sharp intake of breath. He closed his eyes for a moment. When he opened his eyes, there was a spark in them that Daniel had never seen before. Show me. The shopkeeper's yellowing eyes lingered on Silver's dusty old suit. You realise, he said, that the item in question will not be cheap. Show me, roared Silver, and he brought his fist down on the counter with such force that Daniel actually jumped. The shopkeeper nodded and cowered and turned away, disappearing down a set of stairs somewhere behind the desk. There was much banging and clattering from an unseen room, and after several minutes he reappeared, carrying a thin wooden box decorated with intricate carvings. Mr Silver took it in his hands and turned his back to both Daniel and the shopkeeper. A pause. Daniel heard the box snap shut, and Silver spun around. His face was blank but there was a light dancing somewhere deep in his eyes. I'll take it, he said, and he reached into his coat and pulled out a huge wad of hundred dollar bills held together with a golden clip. He tossed the money onto the desk. It was more money than Daniel had ever seen or imagined, and he watched the shopkeeper's eyes widen and his face become a mask of avarice and hunger. He dropped his raw onion to the floor and wiped the drool from the corner of his mouth stooping up the money and cradling it in his hands like a baby. Do we have a deal or don't we? Silver asked impatiently. Oh yes, said the shopkeeper, and he held out a long hand that was both the colour and texture of blue vein cheese. We have a deal, all right. We have a deal. And that brings us to the end of this chapter and our class reading sessions for this week. Has Mr Silver found the elusive treasure that he's been searching for? What might be inside the wooden box? Make sure you come back and listen again on Monday to find out. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Bye for now. Take care.